So Hibernate is one of the most difficult technologies that we talk about in CIT 360. It's not the concepts really around Hibernate that are all too difficult. What is generally the hardest thing for students is to get everything connected right. So I want to spend a few minutes on a very simple example of getting it connected right. So I'm going to begin with a MySQL database. So I've got here a really super simple database I call test. And I've got a couple of different tables in here, but the only one that matters is the customer table. And so I've got um, test and I created a really simple query here that um, when run gives me some output. You notice that I'm only even, there are several columns in this table, but I'm only using two because the key to getting Hibernate right is starting with something really simple. I can't emphasize that enough. So I've already tested to make sure that uh, MySQL Workbench can connect to my MySQL instance so I'm checking to make sure that that's right. I've got my database running. I can connect to it. I get response from it. I got a simple database and a really simple table. So that's the first thing. That's the database part. Okay. The second part is getting the libraries from Hibernate. So I am here in SourceForge. If you go to hibernate.org and you click on download, it'll take you here to this same place. And I'm going to download. Um, I actually don't really want to download it because I just downloaded it already. But what I got was, let me see if I can pull that up for you. Well, I end up with a, a zip file that it's expanding right now that has a whole bunch of files in it. Now what I have to do is I have to get those in the build path of the program that I'm going to write. So here is my download. I'm going to go into the folder here and Sorry, I'm looking for it here. Um, oh, sorry, this was Hibernate Search. That's why it's not looking right. All right, I'll come down here to the real one. I downloaded the Hibernate release. There's a lib folder in here, and I'm using um, I'm using IntelliJ. So I'm gonna just show you what I'm gonna do here in IntelliJ. I come up to file and to project structure. Um, in, in, in Eclipse, I right click on the project and I click on um, build path to do the same thing. So under libraries, what I actually did was very simply, I found the um, required folder I copied everything here and I drug it over into classes here. And so you need the Hibernate library and that gave me everything that I needed for Hibernate. The next thing that you need to find is the MySQL connector. And it's a jar file and it is usually where MySQL is, it came with your MySQL download. If you want to just search your PC for MySQL dash connector, you will find it and do the same thing with it. Drag it in to this library so that IntelliJ and your program know where to find these libraries. So I'm assuming that you now have all the jars that you need in your uh, IDE in the build path of your program. Okay, so then I just created a normal project, Java project, 
calling it hibernate here. Under the source library, I created a package. And in that package, I created a class. In this case, I called it customer to, to relate to the um, database. Remember the database here? I've got customer. I'm using only two fields out of the database. Actually, I think I expanded it after I did this, but I'm using ID, name, address, and phone number. They are all in the customer file. Because the ID uh, field in my customer database is an identity field, that means that I don't, I don't actually do anything with it. It just increments on its own. I have to specify that. So I start up here, and this section right here tells me that th tells Hibernate that this class relates to the table customer, and then this field relates to the ID field, and this field relates to the name field, and so on. And they, you don't have to name the um, the class variables the same as the table variables, but you know it's kind of easier if you do. Then I generated getters and setters, and I actually just put a two string in here as well. So that is my customer file. I have included this uh, javax.persistence uh, import. That comes from the Hibernate um, list of file a list of jars that we have already put in the build path okay so the next thing that I do is I create a hibernate config file this rather than going directly under where I've been putting all my classes it goes one back so it's right under under source it's not under the package hibernate.config.xml you're going to want to take this and adapt it a little bit. Um, this is your reference to your driver that you needed to include. That's your MySQL-connect file, that uh, jar file. Here is uh, the URL that gets to your uh, database. Localhost 3306 is the standard for MySQL. Test is the name of my, data, of, of my database. Here's my root and password. Oh, I shared you my password. <laughs> um, and then the rest of this stuff, probably until down here, the rest of this will be the same for you. You probably don't need to change this at all. Down here under mapping, this is the full path to my customer class. Since it's in a package, it includes all the package plus the name of the class. If I have multiple classes, I put them uh, one after another here. This allows me to not have to have a mapping XML file. So if you're looking at an example that has a mapping XML file, the combination of having this line and then having this annotation and these other annotations mean that I don't have to have a file, an XML file, that tells Hibernate how to map it. It takes care of that itself. The next table or the next class I have here is called Hibernate Utils. You're generally going to have something like this that um, deals with getting everything connected together in Hibernate. What I did differently than what you will generally see in your examples is I put the classes or the I put the methods that actually call the um, that call hibernate into this next class we'll talk about here in a minute called test DAO. Okay, so sometimes you see that in here. I put it in this other file because you know then it's separated from all this gobbledygook that is all very, very Hibernate specific. Um, this, by the way, is what tells this where to go to find the config file. 
So this is really super important. You'll have this on every one of your programs and it, you just have one and that's all you have to do with it. No matter how much and how complex it, the database connectivity becomes. The uh, next one here for me is this test DAO file. This has, this is actually uses a singleton pattern. Uh, that allows it so that I don't have to have it be a uh, static, I don't have static methods and stuff because I really don't like that. Basically, I've got a factory, uh, session factory and I've got a session. Notice that I instantiate the factory here and then I, this here is what makes it a singleton. You know, every time I instantiate test DAO, it does not create a new uh, instance. It only ever creates an instance once and then it just gives you the instance that's created. I have two methods here. One method that gets a list of customers, so multiple customers, and one that gets a single customer and you pass in a parameter to indicate which ID to pick up. Uh, these are pretty close to being the same. I open the session. I begin a transaction. This defines the SQL. Notice I don't have the words select and the list of fields. That's okay. Hibernate takes care of that itself. Um, this also allows me to have flexibility in what fields I pick up. If I decide that I want to add more fields to my customer class, I can do that and I don't have to do anything here. So it keeps it separate. Now it's actually going to create the query and get the results. This is all stuff that Hibernate does behind the scenes to call the database, execute the query, bring the results back. It's going to put them in a list of customers. I'm committing it, so that actually commits the transaction, and then it returns the list. I do close my session down here. There's another example that floats floating around where rather than op doing an open session right here, it does a uh, get session something, I forget. But the problem with that, maybe it's not a problem, when you use a get session, uh, it will um, close it when you commit it. In my case, I wanted to, sh to run this one and then to run this one after it. Well, it was already closed, the session was, so I've, that's why I've changed this around this way. This does almost the same thing. The only difference is, is that it adds the ID to the end of the string, calls it just in the same way, so have the same session close. The last thing I have is the program that runs. Here's the one with the main in it. It instantiates test DAO. It um, sets up a list, gets the customer. This is where it calls the DAO class and gets all the customers. And then I'm just going through a for loop where I'm writing out the each of the classes in the loop. This one calls that other method that just into just returns one single customer. So if I um, run this, it will first of all give me all of the hibernate crap. That's all in red here. And then when it's done with that, then it actually executes the both of them. This is the list and then this is the individual one. So if you are, if it's not working for you, the first thing you want to do is look at the log here, the output, and you probably have a stack trace in here. And you'll have to start kind of troubleshooting why you're getting a particular error. It, um, it could very well be one of the things that I noticed when I was just doing this myself was um, right here, when you put in this query, this uh, this SQL query, you notice that this is the customer full path to the customer uh, class, not the customer table. That threw me off a little bit. That might throw you off too. 
that's um, the one that kind of th that kind of got me. But go down and kind of look in here, and you might have to Google what the error is and get some direction there. So that is as simple of an example as I can get. I'll share with you the code for this as well so that you can see it. But I hope that this has been helpful for you.